Hello, hello, everybody. Sammy here, your host of the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast, back for another one. And this one has a little bit of a twist to it. So I have been running my business for a little over four years now and am a big fan of diversifying and having multiple streams of income. Slowly, don't do it all at once, but I have a lot of different things that kind of run behind the scenes to help me generate income. And I've done podcasts um, on this before. Um, But one of the new ones that I added to my list in March was um, direct sales. So, um, which is very different from what I typically do as far as consulting um, and working with businesses and nonprofits and helping you guys grow and get more visibility. But um, I was invited to a party with one of my dear friends and fell in love with the product and um, just really was like, you know what, this could be something that I can lend my experience to to help me um, generate long term revenue, um, be in it for the long game. Right. And so it's been great. And through that, um, I have been uh working alongside in in Becky Launder's program, who is a guest, my guest today. Um, And I knew her inside of another coaching program that we're both in together. Um, But it was great to kind of work with her in this capacity. And as I've been working through this, it just really kind of dawned on me that there's such a great opportunity for nonprofits and direct sellers to work together to bring awareness and visibility to both sides of the organization um, and to really participate and raise awareness for the things that nonprofits are doing. And so I wanted to have her on today to talk with you guys about some ways to go about it, how to think about it. Um all the things as it relates to potentially partnering with a direct seller um, and your organization for a fundraiser and some brand awareness. And there are companies that do everything from fitness to beauty products, to kids books, to clothing, to makeup, you know, like it's, it runs the gamut. So you can absolutely find a company that can support you um, and your goals and your mission. Becky Launder is the CEO and co-founder of Modern Direct Seller, author of 52 Tips, Build a Thriving Direct Sales Business, Brains Behind the Modern Direct Seller Academy, Modern Direct Seller Box, and the Direct Sales Insights Survey. Becky is known for modernizing the direct sales industry with her Modern Direct Seller Framework, which is being adapted across companies worldwide. She and her husband, Jeremy, deliver training, tools, and courses for direct sellers on topics ranging from email marketing, website development, and personal branding. Becky is usually running from one kid activity or biz meeting to the next, trying not to spill her coffee. I mean, come on. Are we not all trying to do all the things all at once? I love it so much. And she's so real and honest. Such great stuff. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. And even if you don't go after a direct sales company to potentially partner with you, I hope that it will inspire you to think about some ways that you can fundraise and raise awareness for your organization in a new and fun, exciting way. But before we get into all the goodness, this episode is brought to you by our new Patreon account. You guys, I am having so much fun interacting with our patrons. It's such a blast. And really what it is is a way for you to take more action on the things that you learn from this episode. So and all the other episodes. So when you sign up to be a patron, um, you will get different perks based off of kind of the level that you sign up for. But at a minimum, you'll get a worksheet that goes along with every episode to help you take action. And you get that worksheet at the beginning of the month. So you'll also kind of get a sneak peek at the episodes that we have coming for you. Um, And there's some good ones coming. I can't even tell you. All the way up to opportunities for you to join us for Ask Me Anythings and maybe even a guest speaker or two will show up that you can ask them questions as well. So I really hope that you'll head on over to the firstclick.net forward slash Patreon to learn about all the perks and benefits that you can get and um, join us so that you can take more action and get more results from all of the amazing things that you're learning on this episode. Okay, let's get to it. You're listening to the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, Sammy Bedell Mulhern, and each week I bring you tips from myself and other experts, as well as hot seats with small business owners and entrepreneurs to demystify digital marketing and get you on your way to generating more leads and growing your business. 
Hey, everybody, please join me in welcoming Becky Launder to the podcast. Becky, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Sammy. Excited to be here. Uh, yeah, so this is a little different conversation because we're talking a little bit about direct sales and how it kind of can intersect in the nonprofit space. So I'd love for you to share kind of um, direct sales, how you got into it, why it's your passion, um, all the things. Yeah. Well, Sammy, I just realized you probably don't even know this about me, but I have a master's in nonprofit management <gasps> leadership. I did not know. <laughs> I probably should have put that in my notes before hopping on the podcast. <laughs> I love it. So my background is working for a nonprofit educational institution. I was in our marketing strategy department. It was a leadership training organization, operated a lot like a university in many ways. Um, and I stumbled into direct sales when I had my first baby and I was looking for a little bit more flexibility. And honestly, in the beginning, I just joined because I wanted the I wanted the kit. It was a yeah. great kit and it was a great deal. And I wanted a discount for my family. <laughs> um, and didn't that evolve into a lot more? So shortly after that, I um, you know, built a very large team with that company and started into the direct sales training world. So I've uh, spent the last few years training direct sellers across different companies and supporting them as they're working to build a profitable direct sales business. So it's been quite a ride. We have an amazing academy of students that are learning new skills and growing their business in an authentic and genuine way and not doing any of those spammy direct sales yeah. tactics. <laughs> and um, I love my group coaching program. I have a podcast. We have a subscription box for direct sellers. So we have a lot going on over here, a software project that we, we have underway. And um, it's just been quite a ride. So I love the direct sales industry. And I love the nonprofit industry because that's where where my yeah. roots really are. Um, and so I'm so looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, me too. I, I did not know that about you. And that's I love that we continue <laughs> to learn things about each other all the time. That's so great. Yes. Um, yeah. So I started in direct sales earlier this year as an additional stream of revenue for my business. And I'm a part of kind of, um, of Becky's program. And one of the things that kept creeping up and creeping into a lot of our conversations was a lot of people talking about ways that they can, you know, do fundraising events for organizations and ways that they can support the organizations they care about within their company and, and how they can partner and do that. Um, and so I just thought it would be a great conversation to talk about some of the some of the fun ways, maybe let's just kick it off with this. Like, what are some of the fun ways that you've seen people create partnerships with nonprofits um, to kind of raise awareness and um, raise some money? Yeah, I mean, there are so many fun ways. I think direct sellers can really partner up with nonprofits in a big way. Um, you know, sometimes it's actually built in to a direct sales mission, right? They have a corporate giving program where the company is either matching or donating a portion of proceeds back to a nonprofit. So some are really established, organized partnership type programs. And then on the flip side, you also see a lot of direct sellers that are just really passionate about that organization and their community. And they're coming up with fun new ways to raise money for them, uh, increase visibility, for the cause, but then also, you know, help them build their brand to get out there and connect and network with new people as well. So I've seen bingo nights. I've seen pop-up events where a portion of the proceeds are being donated back. I've seen, um, you know, different ways to partner with a direct sales team. So there's a whole team that is working together to fundraise for a specific nonprofit. So there's just been lots of really, really fun ways that I've seen direct sellers connect in with the nonprofit industry to, to really help them fulfill their mission um, and make it kind of a win-win partnership. Well, I think the beauty of it is, is opposed to partnering with a corporation, um, you're partnering with a person who has a personal relationship with your organization or a personal um, connection to the mission. And so you can be a little bit more creative and think outside the box um, because you're not necessarily, you're, you're kind of dealing with the backing of corporate marketing, but on an individual basis. 
Absolutely. You know, in, in my drug sales business uh, back in the day, I was selling children's books and I was volunteering with a nonprofit to spread literacy in schools in our neighborhood. And after volunteering with them, I realized, gosh, like I have this opportunity. I'm selling kids books. How do mm-hmm. I get more books in the hands of the kids that are taking place in the, you know, the programs that this nonprofit is offering? And so I had a really outstanding ongoing partnership with them where you know, we did fundraisers and people gave donations and donated those books back to the kids that that really needed them. And I got my customers involved. I brought them, you know, more visibility in our community about their mission and what they were all about. And I mean, it was something we would do a couple times a year. And it was it was just a ton of fun. It, it really kind of filled my cup. And mm-hmm. I know they appreciated it because I showed up with a handful of books for yeah. them, you know, every time we did a fundraiser and they were able to get those to kids in their neighborhood. So that's a very specific example, but there's so many different ways that, um, you know, depending upon the nonprofit and the direct seller and really what their passion is to give back in a meaningful way in the community. So you talked about, I think with that example, what's great is there is such a connection with what you were selling to what the mission of that organization was doing. So that makes it such a natural um, fit. And so one question I have about that is when you were running some of those fundraisers, were people in your customer base giving, even if they weren't in that same physical location where, um, those books were being received? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I had customers all over the country, even though I'm based here in San Diego, California. And uh, yeah, I had customers all over. And even though it was benefiting kids in San Diego, I mean, part of it was that they wanted to support me, right? And it was something mm-hmm. that I was passionate about and my family was passionate about. And so they got on board with it and they knew that it was going to make a difference in the lives of a child, even though, you know, they might not be in their neighborhood specifically. Specifically. And so I think this is, I harp on collaboration all the time. And that's what I think is so great about this is by you have a personal connection or any direct seller has a personal connection for their own personal, whatever. I like this organization. I want to figure out a way to support this organization. I can do it through my direct sales business. You are immediately then being introduced to their entire network of people who already trust this person that you're talking to. So it's like amp- giving you like a megaphone to kind of amplify your message, um, whether or not those people choose to purchase and have, have uh, a donation, you're still really getting an opportunity to talk more about who you are and who you serve. Absolutely. And I have another example, um, a good friend of mine, every month she picks a new charity to support and she, she doesn't necessarily partner with that charity. She just says this month, I'm going to donate 10% of my profit to this organization. And she'll make a post about it in her social media groups. And she'll talk about why she loves the organization, what they're all about. And then at the end of the month, she cuts a check to them. And so it's a way for her to, you know, put more eyes Mm -hmm. on the cause that she cares about, but also using her business as a vehicle to give back, which is huge. I Yeah, I think that's wonderful. And it, it goes back to, to the goals of what we're trying to do. So Um, I know you've seen this in your marketing side of your business and all of, all of that, but how, you know, really putting to the event or to the fundraiser, the purpose behind it. So it might not raise you thousands of dollars, but it's going to give you access to a whole new group of people that you then have the opportunity to nurture, um, and, and build upon. Yeah, a hundred percent, right? Direct sellers are all about building relationships. Mm-hmm. That's that's how they do business, <laughs> right? And that's right. the only way they're gonna do business because they're a hundred percent revenue is coming in based on their commission and their sales volume. So they are out there, they're connecting, they're they're meeting new people and getting in front of new audiences. And so I think direct sellers are a fabulous partner in the sense that, you know, they usually have a really strong social network and mm-hmm. they're they have good connections and they want to get out there and they want to meet new people. And, um, and so it is a completely new audience that you could potentially have your organization exposed to that you wouldn't have otherwise and use that direct seller and the platform that she or he has Mm -hmm. to share your mission. 
Okay. So let's talk partnership and let's talk, um, relationship because I think these are two really key elements. Um, and I think a lot of nonprofits tend to take advantage of some of those. I mean, we've all been in those situations, right. Where you've partnered with a nonprofit and they don't hold up their end of the bargain or they don't Mm -hmm. support. Right. So I think to be successful in this kind of situation and to really take, um, take those new contacts that you get, those new eyeballs that you get and and take them to the next level. The nonprofit really needs to step up and do their part, which isn't time consuming or crazy, but um, you know, like what kinds, what kinds of ways did the organization you partner with kind of support you and really make those fundraising events kind of more successful? Yeah. And I think that this is such a good point because I've definitely done partnerships that are a little bit more one-sided, which is totally fine. Like we know that that's how things go sometimes, but I've also, you know, worked with nonprofits where it's super collaborative. And from the beginning, we have a meeting and we establish how we're going to promote this fundraiser together and what kind of support I need from them in order for it to be successful. So, you know, do I need uh, marketing assets? Do I need them to join my Facebook group and answer questions? questions as Mm -hmm. it comes up about their mission and what they're all about or, you know, how are they going to really, you know, foster these relationships and connect on a meaningful way with my audience or my donors that are supporting what they're all about. So, you know, I've, I've kind of seen it go both ways. And I definitely think the most successful are where, you know, it's really a true partnership and collaboration. And there's an opportunity for, uh, the nonprofit to really be involved. And, and it doesn't mean like involved, like you're spending hours and hours, right? And, exactly. you know, tons of money on the fundraiser. It's like, you just got to show up. You got to respond to people's comments. When somebody makes a donation, comment and say, thank you so much. We're so happy to have your support. Um, you know, if you're educate on your mission and your programming, that's also a great opportunity. Um, or even hop on like a Facebook live and right. share a little bit about what you're all about. And so again, you're getting that visibility and you're making those connections and maybe a new social circle that you haven't been in before. So I think setting up some of those ground rules from the beginning, but also participating throughout the fundraiser. And then of course, the follow-up is huge as well. Well, I think also understanding that the more that you do that, the more long-term you might not switch somebody to a donor right away but the way that you treat people throughout the event might be the thing that kind of pushes them to say, okay, well, I see that they're actually, if they're showing up for me like this then they must show up for their audience like this too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's so important. Okay. And then, I I mean, so kind of to switch to the direct seller side, I mean, like this, these types of things can be long-term win-win. So you talked about follow-up and so the follow-up is key Um, and so who should be doing the follow-up posts an event like this? Yeah. So, I mean, it it can kind of go both ways, right? So as a direct seller, I like, I would coach my direct sellers to, you know, give shout outs to anyone that's donating, thank them for their purchase. Thanks for their involvement. Um, and then I think also on the nonprofit side, being able to recognize that direct seller, even a simple little shout out on social media. Hey, thank you so much, Becky. You know, you donated 250 bucks to our, our fall reading program or whatever it might be. Uh Um, you know, kind of giving, giving them a little bit of of visibility back. Um, I know in one of my previous partnerships, we really co-promoted it. So it was going into a newsletter and all the donations were coming in directly through the nonprofit versus me taking them as a direct seller and then writing a check at the end. And so that, that worked out really well too, because then anyone that was donating was then on their email list and they could nurture those leads and they could stay in touch with those donors. So um, I think at the bare minimum, at least, you know, being able to give a thank you letter to anyone that donated and how they can connect and learn more about the organization would be so, so valuable in terms of bringing in new followers and don't for the nonprofit. Well, and I think too, it's also about, um, obviously the nonprofit's going to provide their mission, whatever, some, uh, some information about the impact they're making on the community. Um, but I have seen nonprofits that, uh, have partnerships with whatever it might be different retailers. It could be anybody, right. Where they're giving a percentage of their proceeds from the sales that day. 
to the organization. And then you see the typical Facebook post from the nonprofit that's like, hey, go here on this day. They're giving us money. I mean, it's more written <laughs> out than that, but that's basically the gist yeah. of what they're saying, right? And so I think there's a missed opportunity there with that too, in that if if the direct seller can provide a little bit more lifestyle and more um, impact statements on their side to also then encourage the existing audience a nonprofit has to participate, um, the direct sellers need to provide that information as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, if direct sellers can put together a little summary of what they're doing and provide even graphics or, you know, some messaging around it, then it makes it really easy for the nonprofit to kind of spread that word to their audience as well. So again, I think it goes both ways. It can, it can definitely be a win-win and establishing kind of what role each person is going to play from the get-go, I think makes a huge difference in the success. Uh, Yeah. And I think if you're a nonprofit and you don't have some of those kind of bullet points written out for all of those types of relationships you have, that's a great starting off point too, whether it be direct seller, whether it be corporation, whether it be events, whatever, like that's a great, uh, just a great reminder for people to put those SOPs systems in place. (laughs) We're all about the systems and... I know I have, uh, I've given everybody a long laundry list of systems to do lately. All the systems. All the systems. (laughs) Um, Well, what, I mean, what else, just from your experience, um, maybe good, bad, ugly, otherwise, what kind of things have you learned um, that might just be things people aren't thinking about when it comes to entering in this kind of relationship? Yeah. So a couple of things that come to mind um, for me is to really think about what what the actual fundraiser is going to look like, right? Are you donating back product or is this a cash fundraiser or we're looking to actually raise funds through it? Or is it a little bit of exposure, right? So nonprofits are putting together events all the time. So is there a way that you can have a vendor area where drag sellers can come and pop up and they can either pay a vendor fee or donate back a percent of their sales to your organization? Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of like tack on a little bit of community involvement, direct sales action onto existing events that you have going on. Um, I know I loved doing events like that back in the day. Those were some of my most favorite because people were already in a giving mood. They they were ready to make some purchases, but I was also able to get in front of new audiences myself. Um, So if you're able to involve direct sellers in any events you have going on, um, that's fabulous. Or even virtual events these days, direct Mm -hmm. sellers are pretty versed in virtual events and could probably probably share some tips even with the nonprofits on how they're running a successful event through social media. Um, uh, Let's see, what else? You know, I would say if you are entering a partnership with the direct seller, I would also ask if they have others on their team that would be excited to participate as well. So in the world of direct sales, that's not competition at all. That's actually fabulous. That's collaboration, right? Like if I'm already going to go enter this fundraiser and create a bunch of assets for it and share it with my community. I would love to have 10 others on my team doing the same and really amplify that voice. So that's that's a quick idea if you are having a conversation with someone, you know, are there anyone else in your drag sales team that would like to be involved on this level? Because um, that's just more people that you're getting in front of as well. That's such a great point, I think. Um, the more the merrier. And I I I guess that's for me, one of the things that I love about being in the direct sales side um, that I think I'm going to harp on the for on the nonprofit side a little bit. But one of the things that I love about the direct sales side versus the nonprofit side is that I feel like the direct sales side community is so much more collaborative and comes from a much more abundant attitude. And the collaborations are great. And whether that's because it's a team setting um, and so we all kind of can win together or not. I mean, you could have your own opinion about that, but um, I think creating as many collaborations and as many people is just going to bring more awareness, bring more funds to the organization and, and make it a bigger win-win for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I think also, you know, looking at it as a long-term 
partnership, Mm -hmm. right? Like Sammy and I just kind of got done talking about this offline, but really thinking about direct sales as you know, you're in it for the long haul. So if you're partnering with a direct seller, you know, I would say, great, we're going to do a fall fundraiser. Can we pencil in our spring dates as well? Right. So thinking about it as an investment to get back in front of people and know that, you know, when spring comes around and it's the second time that you're promoting that fundraiser or that event to that audience, they're going to be even more inclined to donate because they're learning more about your organization. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hear in the world of marketing over and over that how many times does it take for you to put your product in front of somebody for before they're like (laughs) 20? (laughs) I know. I think that's like the new stat. It used to be seven. Now I think it's like 32 times, right? Um, But really like, you know, that's more visibility. And if you've already established a partnership, you figured out what works, like go ahead and replicate that year after year, season after season and continue to build that relationship in a way that, you know, the direct seller and, and her community really look forward to it. And really, you know, it's an opportunity to improve from the last event to the next event to, to really help get the word out about your organization. Well, to your point, you've created the graphics, you've created the system, like all, then you already have the template in place. So each subsequent time you do it is actually less and less work. Absolutely. And that's why, um, like the organization I partnered with here in San Diego for the books, it was perfect because anytime I had a teammate that was looking to reach a promotion goal, there were certain sales expectations Mm. she was working to reach. And if she was like, gosh, I don't know how I'm going to do it. My go-to was always like fundraiser. (laughs) You're going to do a fundraiser and I'm going to give you all the graphics and you're going to reach out to your community and you're going to tell them how they can get involved. And at the end of the day, my nonprofit over here is going to love you and love us more than they ever have before because we're showing up with more product for them and we know that they're going to benefit from it. So So it's a, it's a great tool for direct sellers to have under their belt, especially if they feel like they've kind of like tapped things out in the sales front. Like we've Mm -hmm. all had those days where we're like, oh my gosh, like we've, we're, you know, we're in a little bit of a rut or we feel like we've talked to everyone that we know about it. Or we, you know, we really need that that month end push to boost up our sales number. A fundraiser is a great way to do that. Yeah. And we've talked about diversifying income, you know, uh, outside of this too. And I think that that's another way just to kind of build in that funnel and and have multiple streams of things coming in that you can then continue to pull from on both sides, right? Like you're getting in front of new people that you can nurture, grow and turn into potential other corporate sponsors, turn into potential Absolutely. long-term donors. Like you have no idea. Um, one of the last things that I want to make sure we touch on before we kind of wrap this up is if we're a nonprofit and we're like, okay, I like what I'm hearing here. I think this is a good idea. I think this would fit for our organization. Um, you know, what are some thoughts or ideas you have as far as finding the right company that might be the right fit for them? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> so, you know, I think that there, there's obviously you know, you want to make sure that the product is aligned with what you believe in. So yes. I, I would do a little bit of research. I would I would look up a couple of different companies that may have a product that's complementary to who you serve and or, or your audience is interested in too. I mean, that would be the other part of it, right? Is is not it maybe it doesn't tie back directly to your programming that you're offering as a nonprofit, but you know, who who do you who's your audience and what are they interested in? What do they like? Um you know, if there's any kind of vendor event type of activity in your community, you can kind of go scout things out too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can look and see what kind of products are being offered, how the direct seller is presenting themselves, because obviously you want to align with somebody that's super professional, that's going to represent your organization and nonprofit in a way that you want them to. Absolutely. <laughs> and it gives you an opportunity to, you know, connect with somebody local and have a conversation with them. So if there are events in your area that you can kind of like scope out who's there and what they're offering. I think that's a really great place to start. Um, And then if you do have a product in mind, you can always reach out to corporate and ask if there's a representative in your area that they would recommend for you to partner with on that type of initiative. And in all likeliness, they probably would refer you to somebody that's a little bit more seasoned and probably has experience doing 
bigger events. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, nonprofits are great at this, but you know, word of mouth referrals too. Who do you know in direct sales? Who do you know with this company? Can I get an introduction? Have a conversation, make sure that you feel like you're getting the right vibe from them and that they're also aligned with your mission because you want somebody that's going to be passionate about this fundraiser and not just doing it for the sake of doing it. You want them to be really aligned with your mission and what you're all about. So I bet if you ask around in your nonprofit or your community that you already have, there's probably a ton of direct sellers that you don't even realize are direct sellers that are already involved on some level. Yeah. And you know what this is just making me think of, and I totally didn't bring this up ahead of time. So I apologize. But um, even thinking about like your big galas or um, like donor thank you uh, items or items you want to put in your VIP bags or goodie bags or things like that. Like direct sellers could be a great opportunity for product donation and things of that caliber as well. So not necessarily thinking about it as a straight cash thing, or maybe if, if it's not as you know great of a connection as I'm going to donate books for kids that don't have books, which is like a perfect alignment. Yeah. Um, it could also be partnering with people that can provide benefits and perks and, and some fun prizes and, and giveaways and goodies for your donors as a thank you. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and I, I can't tell you how many times I donated a raffle basket mm, <laughs> right? right? just for the sake of the visibility of like, okay, I'm in the program and oh, like somebody walking by that table is going to see my basket. Oh, my yep. business cards are sitting out in front of it. And so I, that's a great place to even just kind of ease into a partnership with another direct seller is, you know, to ask for a donation or even discounted product to see if they're able to help you out. And that can kind of, you know, maybe spark something bigger as well. I love it. And I, I don't know why that had never occurred to me before. That's so smart. (laughs) It's like sometimes the things that are like right in front of your face, you don't think about. And I just, I mean, I don't want to like hit it too hard, but it's like, you don't have to worry about going to too many levels. Like you just go to the person, they make the decision or they, they, they don't. So it kind of removes a lot of that, um, paperwork and politics around like what corporate, like what bigger businesses have the ability to do and not do in that moment. Exactly. And you probably will have a direct connection to their audience. Yep, and that's the other exactly. thing, you know, if you're doing a corporate par- partnership, you may, you know, on some level connect with the members of that company. But I think especially in direct sales, they're going to be eager to show you off and tell tell their followers Absolutely. and tell their community how yeah. great you are and why they believe in your mission. So they give you that credibility and that access to a brand new social service of connections that you can, you can cultivate too. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is so good. I hope that you guys will consider, um, taking a look at some of your favorite direct sales companies. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can build on that relationship. And I think the key takeaway from today for me is relationship and collaboration because really creativity in the sky is the limit for how that relationship can bloom and grow. Um, are there any final words, Becky, that you might want to leave with nonprofits when it comes to entering into a relationship with a direct seller? Oh, I think, I mean, just go for it. Go for it. Give it a shot. See how it goes. The first time around might be a little bit rocky, but like anything, you'll learn from it. You'll fine tune it. You'll find the right partner and you'll maybe even find kind of a system that, that works that could even align with multiple direct sellers Mm -hmm. or multiple direct sales organizations in a way that is going to be that win-win and really benefit you and benefit them as well. So I think it's just such a great opportunity. Um, and an, natural collaboration. So yeah. thank you Amy, for well, inviting so, me and chatting course, about this. I love course. it. Well, and like you said, well, there's a lot of people out there that we don't even know are direct sellers. A lot of us have them as side hustles. So if any of you are out there in the nonprofit world and also run a direct sales business, definitely check out Becky. Um, Becky, how can they find out more about you and your academy and your podcast and all of the 50 million things that you do? <laughs> <laughs> you can find all 50 million things over at Modern Direct Seller dot com. So that is our website. I'm over on Instagram at Modern Direct Seller. You can find us on Facebook, um, all, all the channels, all the places, doing all the things. <laughs> Are doing all the things. It's wonderful and amazing. Just as you are. Well, Becky, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. 
I just love Becky so much and I'm so thankful for her time to come on this episode and share her passion with you guys to allow you guys to share more about your passion. Um, all of the great stuff we talked about will be in the show notes at thefirstclick.net forward slash podcast. I hope that you'll check it out. And, uh, you know, let us know if you're going to be partnering with a direct sales company and which one that is, because um, we'd love to hear some of the unique things that you're doing and maybe pass it along to other direct sellers so they can help organizations like yours in their own community. So, For now, subscribe where you listen so you don't miss an episode and I will see you in the next one.